Welcome to Grad Chats with Dr. B. I'm your host, Dr. B, and today is a really special and different kind of episode for us. Not only are we all here in the room together, and we're recording this on video, so, wow, let's all sit up a little bit straighter, <laughs> um, but it's my farewell episode, and so I'm here with my team, and we've been meeting weekly for years now, getting this podcast going. Um, but when we talked about what this farewell episode might look like, they decided they wanted to ask the question. So they're flipping the script on me, and I'm telling you, they've got a script, and I'm feeling a little bit nervous. But before we get started with their questions, let's go around the table and just introduce ourselves to the listeners. We'll start over here. My name is John Scott Kelly, and I'm the Graduate Student Support GA. Excellent. My name is Taylor Ingram. I am one of the two graduate admission specialists in the graduate school. My name is Abby Lewis. I'm a graduate research assistant. I'm Carly Crabtree. I'm one of the graduate research assistants. I'm Megan DiBenedetto, and I'm the new graduate student support GA. All right. Thank you all. So let's get started. Who's got the first question? I do. Oh, excellent. (laughs) (laughs) You've been very active with podcasts. Oh, let me me say, too, to the audience. I have not heard these questions. (laughs) That is really important. (laughs) Okay, go ahead, So you've been very active with the podcast episodes over the past few years, and you've discussed a wide range of topics with so many interesting guests. What stands out to you right now as you think about all those podcasts? Wow. I thought you were going to ask me for my favorite one. I was ready for that question. (laughs) I mean, like, you can say that. (laughs) Um, I think what stands out to me is just uh, the wide array of people that I've had the opportunity to interact with. Um, both faculty and graduate students on our campus, and even recently we've had a faculty member from another university, um, talking about really important topics that I think all graduate students would benefit from hearing from. So it's been just a really great opportunity to um, laugh and plan and think seriously about what the needs of our graduate students are. Mm -hmm. Um, Not this past summer, but the summer before, Mm We were at commencement in August over in the Reynolds Center, and I'm just standing on the side of the room saying hello as people come in or whatever. And this guy was like across the room, and he made a beeline for me. Um, And so he came over, and he said, hey, Dr. B, like he knew me, and I did not know him. And he said, I just want to thank you. I have listened to your podcast every chance I've had, you know, as I commuted back and forth to campus because he lived like, you know, 30, 40 minutes away. And it has been so beneficial. The ideas are helpful, but just listening and and learning about different people and different programs has been phenomenal. And I was really blown away. Like that, to me, is what this podcast is about. And so to have been a a part of that and knowing that it's going to continue um, is really important for me. So thank you. Good answer. What's your favorite one? My favorite one. Um, I think it's Ty Hollowell. Yeah. So he, um, gosh, what was the topic? Networking Mm -hmm. was Mm -hmm. the topic, which that was a topic that some graduate students on our advisory council had recommended. Mm -hmm. Um, And we had done, I believe we did a webinar with them, but then followed up with a podcast interview, and it was just so much fun to interact with him. They've all been great, but that is the one that stands out to me for sure. All right, next. Bring it. I'm ready. I'm warmed up and going now. So the podcast will never be the same without you, um, but we are going to continue to record new episodes, which is why we like to unveil the new logo and title of the podcast. The logo was voted on with a poll that went out to the UCA graduate students. Um, the new title is Grad Chats at UCA, and our logo is our passionate bear. Um, He's not angry, folks. He's passionate. He's passionate. Yeah. Um, Dr. V, since we are moving forward with the newly titled Grad Chats at UCA, um, what would be some good episode topics for the future? Oh, wow. So, well, one thing, and I've said this before, probably to y'all in this room, and and definitely said it to other people on campus when we've talked about the podcast. My original plan with the podcast was to build um, belonging for students who are either not here, maybe they're online students, Uh, Maybe their time here is limited to one night a week sitting in a classroom, Um, but also before they even get here. So like you've applied, you've been accepted, and you're not here yet. So my thought was if we can um, find a way to make connections and build belonging, that that goes a long way towards supporting graduate student success. 
And I think we've done that. And I think that's exhibited in that story I just told a moment ago about the guy at August commencement who feels like he knows me, which is awesome, even though we've never even met. Um, so I think there's some um, validity to this idea that when you listen to podcasts and you've got someone in your head talking, you, it builds belonging. You build a connection. So with that in mind, like I would love to see y'all do a series of podcasts where you're talking with different graduate students from different paths, right? So you talk to the graduate student who did their um, undergraduate here at, at UCA and then continued straight into their graduate program. Or you talk to the graduate student who did their undergraduate somewhere else and then chose to come here. And you talk to the graduate student who chose to come from out of state and finds themselves in Conway, Arkansas, trying to figure out the area. Or the person who's from in-state, but not necessarily from Conway. Because then what we can do is share those with our students. And we can say, hey, you're a student who came from out of state. Listen to this particular podcast interview. And I can tell y'all that our podcast listeners know that I have two children. Because <laughs> I've talked about them. And I remember... Um, when my daughter, who's my oldest, was a freshman and she was going to, she was going to be going to the University of Tennessee, um, but we are an Auburn family, something else that probably the podcast listeners know. <laughs> and so we were a little sad that she was not going to get to go to Auburn, and that was simply because we weren't going to pay out-of-state tuition and all that jazz. Um, so we were there for some kind of orientation meeting, and they had a bunch of students up on stage. And each one introduced themselves. And this one girl stood up, and she said, Y'all, I grew up my whole life planning to go to Auburn, and I didn't get to do it. And I came here to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and I'll tell you, I don't regret that decision at all. That meant so much to me. That meant so much to my daughter. Like, that connection, even just a little bit, just knowing somebody else is out there that you can connect with, um, that you have a similar story with is a very powerful moment. So that is my hope that you all will continue the podcast, but really consider a season of making connections with different paths that people take towards getting into graduate school. And then I hope you'll add, and this part y'all haven't heard because I haven't talked to y'all yet about this, um, but last week I met with a student advisory council and their recommendation was that we consider a way for people to connect after the podcast or ask questions after the podcast. So if you can build that in, then when the listener hears, oh, listen at this non-traditional age student who's successful in graduate school, they can follow up with that person and ask them questions. And I think that would be a great way to grow the podcast as well. So as you move into your new position in a different state, you might meet people who know very little about UCA. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the UCA Graduate School to someone who is unfamiliar with it? Wow, y'all are, <laughs> y'all are doing great. Y'all have got some wonderful questions and we should be like inter interviewing the next dean with these questions. <laughs> um, so what would I want to tell people about graduate school here at UCA? I think my go-to, and y'all know what I'm gonna say, is this idea of being inspired, empowered, accomplished. So I would use our tagline to frame that conversation. And I think what's fascinating is, you know, we're a small portion of the population on this campus, right? We have around 10,000 students total. We have just under 2,000 students, uh, 2,000 graduate students. So we're a small group, but we're a mighty group and we are doing wonderful, wonderful things. And so when I think about graduate school, there's a lot happening that should inspire anyone to want to come to UCA to go to graduate school. Um, and depending on their background, I would talk a, a little bit about some of the stories that I'm aware of, the different things that are happening on campus. Um, but then I would want them to think about like um, how just graduate school empowers you in general, and then how accomplished we have been in the six and a half years that I've been here. And we're on an upward trajectory. So this thing is not gonna fall off the rails just because I'm not here. I've, and you all are a big part of that, like building something up that's gonna continue to grow and be wonderful. So I think that's where I would ground it in that tagline, inspired, empowered, accomplished, and supplement that with stories of different uh, things that are happening on our campus, because there are some really wonderful people, um, there are wonderful programs, there are wonderful stories, and it's really the people that make this place what it is. Okay, so going along with the tagline, yeah. as someone who is so inspiring and accomplished, what last words of advice do you have to UCA graduate students? Wow, okay. Um, 
Words of advice. advice. Um, so one of the things that, so one of the reasons that I became really passionate about graduate school is because my particular experience in, um, in my doctoral program was, um, it wasn't that great. Um, I didn't know it at the time. I thought everything was wonderful. <laughs> And if you, you know, I, my degrees are all from Auburn, and so it's very different now than when I finished with my PhD. But I came in, my dissertation chair was the only math ed faculty member, which that's my discipline. The second math ed faculty line was empty the entire time. They couldn't, hide, they couldn't find somebody to hire. And he was retiring, and he actually retired in the middle of my program. So I had, um, phenomenal experiences of teaching. Like I taught every methods class they had for those math educators. I did all the student supervision. I had all these connections in the community because I did all those placements. I mean, I was busy. But when I finished, I didn't have any presentations, no conference presentations, and no um, papers published. So even though I had done all those wonderful things, that was just a blip on my CV. And so I was not very marketable when I finished. Now, obviously I got a job and I did pretty well at it, you know, and so I've, got, I've, I've come overcome sort of that hurdle. But my <clears throat> point in telling the story is that I did everything that I was asked and I did it to 110%. Um, and when I finished, I felt really great until I got in the job market and I feel figured out, wow, I don't have what I need to be successful in this job market. Um, and that's through no fault of my own. And I'm not necessarily faulting my university or even my faculty member, he retired. You know, give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know. And so coming back to our um, tagline, we talk about being inspired and, we, and it's that portion of being empowered. And knowledge empowers people. And so while we're here, and we're so focused on our discipline and doing the work of being that person in film or in exercise science or psychology or the CSPA grad, right? <laughs> like we're so focused on that that we don't always stop and think about kind of the bigger picture or the landscape that that sits in. We don't always stop and ask, if you were hiring someone in psychology, what would you look for, right? Or if you talk to an exercise science person that just graduated, what was it on your CV or your resume that really made you stand out? Or looking at a potential employer and saying, when you look at my resume, what is it that you want to be seeing in me? Like ask those questions now while you're in the program so that when you finish, you're marketable. Because it's really easy as a faculty member to kind of lose sight of that bigger picture because we're all tied up in our world, right? Um, but ask those questions and keep an eye on that, that goal um, because really it's not just about being marketable, it's about being the best person you can be when you finish your program. So that's the advice that I would give and really that is based in my experience of graduate school and how it kind of fell short for me. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing I would say, and for this I quote, I hate to say this because back then we called them pledge trainers. Now they call them new member development people. But you know, in my sorority back in the 80s, big hair, blue eyeshadow, the whole nine <laughs> yards, you know. I remember the day that the um, person who was charging my pledge class said, you get out of it what you put into it. And like that is so true. Like whatever you're doing, if you don't put a lot into it, you're going to finish and be like, oh, whatever. It didn't have a huge impact on me. But graduate education should be transformational. In order for it to be transformational, you have to put yourself into it. So that would be my second piece of advice is uh, to think about that idea that the more you put into it, the more you will get out of it. And then what a better world it's going to be because you'll be out there having a positive impact on it. Thanks. <laughs> Great answer. Drop the mic and walk out. <laughs> no, no. One more. We're almost done. Uh, but I have the distinct honor of asking the final question, and I apologize in advance, it's kind of long. Um, so Dr. Barlow, you're leaving behind quite a legacy here at UCA because you've had a remarkably positive impact on the graduate school and its students, myself included. You have recorded many podcast episodes, and you've facilitated the development of a new graduate school motto, Inspired, Empowered, Accomplished. You prioritized and fortified Graduate Student Appreciation Week in accordance with your enduring mission to value and respect all graduate students. 
we currently sit at near record enrollment and the only reason it's near record is because the previous record was shattered last year under your leadership. You have many achievements beyond those listed here, but what do you hope is your legacy at UCA? <laughs> Y'all should have sent me that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I hope is what y'all just heard, and that's laughter. Like, no lie. Like, it is so important to enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the people around you. So I really hope that that is something that when people think of me at UCA, they think laughter, right? But that I'm not a clown. I take things seriously and want to work and, and get things done, right? Um, so in terms of legacy, uh, wow, is that what you asked for mm -hmm. the legacy? Um, you know, I, I feel like, so when I got here in 2017, if you opened up the website for UCA and you hovered over academics, you saw the academic colleges, you saw the honor, honors college, you did not see the graduate school. And if you clicked on academics, it went to a page that had videos that highlighted each one of the academic colleges and the honors college, and you did not see the graduate school. And so that's where we started. Um, so graduate school has always been important at UCA. I mean, I believe that. If it wasn't, they would have decentralized this office years ago and just said good luck to everybody who had graduate programs. So it is valued and it's respected <clears throat> and it plays a pivotal part in who we are as a university. But it's all, not always been recognized and certainly not elevated on our campus. So in my mind, I think that everything that you just brought up is a part of a bigger desire to elevate the presence of graduate school, not only on our campus, but off of our campus. And so I hope that that's something that I've done and done well enough that it stays after I've gone and continues to grow. Um, you know, we all did a little dance back in the summer when the um, UCA bulletin board went up and it had graduate school on it. Like, that's huge. Remember, we weren't even on the website. <laughs> and now to be featured on the two bull, um, billboards that are out on the interstates is, is huge for us. So I hope that that's the legacy that people look back and they think, okay, graduate school took off at some point. There's a lot of things happening that made that happen. I mean, there's I'm here, there's y'all are here, y'all are doing great things. We've got Graduate Student Appreciation Week, and all that came because I was beginning to be involved in our regional graduate school um, group, that conference group. Um, and but we've got all these little things, but every single one of them is a when it comes together, it's building synergy towards graduate education on this campus. So I hope that in addition to laughter, <laughs> and maybe some dancing and singing, yeah. um, that, that that's what people think about. It's like this is a moment where graduate education kind of stood up on its own two feet and began to walk. So yeah, I'm going with that answer. Great answer. Excellent. Great answer. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining me today with this very special last episode for me of Grad Chats with Dr. B. Um, y'all came with great questions, and I really appreciate the opportunity to reflect back on this time together. Um, I appreciate the thoughtfulness with which y'all approach this podcast. I think y'all are a wonderful group, and um, uh, Dr. Mills will come in, and he'll have the pleasure of working with some very fine people. So thank y'all. Um, for being here today. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're very lucky, like we are videoing this. And so if you're listening and you are like, what do these people look like? So go right <laughs> on over to the Graduate School's YouTube channel and you'll find us there uh, to see our video recording of the podcast. Um, so thank you again for listening and I hope that you will uh, follow, subscribe to the podcast and listen to future episodes. That's it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs>